please pay ESCC a visit. There is a problem there. You guys need to go and visit and, and say hello to the EACC because we have a problem. Mr. Speaker, this House, in terms of accountability, has impeached at least five governors. That is 10% of the counties. Can our brothers tell us how many ministers they have impeached? This House has gone to the Supreme Court to seek opinions that has developed jurisprudence in this nation. This House, in unison, marched to Milimani. And Mr. Speaker, in our march to Milimani, the late Senator Haji, the Senator uh, Gideon Moy, the, the, the senators that you could not imagine were the ones who were leading our march to Milimani on the concurrence matter. Mr. Speaker, this Senate has taken its services and its sittings out of Nairobi, and I think we've gone to four counties. This Senate has organized legislative conferences and evolution conferences. They should tell us the last time the National Assembly sat outside Nairobi. But it does not matter, Mr. Speaker, because in the end, the difference between us and them is like the difference between a cheetah and a leopard. And in my community, we have one name for both. And so it does not matter whether we voted yes or no. We are all collectively in this. Mr. Speaker, the SRC matter has been dealt with. And I think perhaps what we should have said is that what should have gone to MPs as a salary increment should be redirected to a certain course, perhaps the course of doctors or the course of the junior secondary school teachers. I would like in this motion, Mr. Speaker, for the majority leader to include another action, that the cabinet secretary to the treasury, Professor Njuguna, who has the habit of snubbing the Senate every time we invite him, to invoke Article 225 on any county executive that gets an adverse opinion. What Article 225 talks about is that 50% of funds are withheld until the county comes up with an, a recovery action plan. And Mr. Speaker, 10% of the money we send to counties is wasted. Not stolen, wasted. Utilized on things that are not necessary. And all our budgets at a national level, 10% is wasted. Mr. Speaker, I want that motion to direct that we go towards a digital government. There are so many meetings that we hold that do not require people to be in the same room. We can do Zoom, we can use virtual technologies, and the commission should tell us when there was COVID, they told us we were procuring a system to facilitate virtual parliament. Why are we still using Zoom, which uh, uh, cannot work properly and can be hacked? So we must drive towards a digital government. Mr. Speaker, on constitutional commissions, Senator Omtata has made a strong case. We must demand that we are part of parliament and we must be involved in allocation of budgets to constitutional commissions. The Kenya National Commission on Human Rights, Mr. Speaker, is being overshadowed by the Law Society of Kenya. And I want to congratulate the leadership of the Law Society of Kenya. They have stood up for the rights of persons who are involved in this protest. They have done better than the Constitutional Commission that is supposed to guarantee observance of human rights in this republic. They have done better than the Commission on, Administrat on Administration of Justice. The last time I heard my friend and sister, the Ombudsman, speak, she was speaking about Muguka. She was not talking about the rights of people and maladministration in this country, which is supposed to be her duty. I hope Gen Z's can also pay her a visit. Mr. Speaker, the National Gender and Equalization Commission is not doing what they should be doing. I hope they can also be paid a visit. Mr. Speaker, I want to... Senator, Senator Kajuang, two minutes to wind up your thoughts. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I was about to suggest that they pay you a visit, but you have... With that, can you take your seat? <laughs> <laughs> Proceed. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, we shall protect you. And, and, and Mr. Speaker, I conclude by supporting and thanking Senator Aaron Cheriot and Senator Madzaya for this motion. Let us stand for this country. Let us do the right things. If this country burns, Mr. Speaker, we have nowhere to go. You have seen the frustration and the problems our brothers and sisters from South Sudan face. Sudan is in fire. Ethiopia is burning. Our neighboring countries are in problems. The Democratic Republic of Congo 
is on the precipice. Even Rwanda itself is on the precipice. We cannot afford to go that route. And the person who takes us to that route, Mr. Speaker, will not be the Gen Z. It will be us in office. It will be the wickedness in high places. It will be the principalities and powers that reside in state house, that reside in this Senate, and that reside in the National Assembly that will take us there. If we are the problem, then the Gen Zs have all legitimate rights to kick us out. But let us smell the coffee, let us wake up before it gets too late. I believe that Kenya can be redeemed. Mr. Speaker, I support. Senator Roba. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, allow me to start with uh, sharing my condolences with the families and uh, the friends and the entire country for the 34 souls that were lost in this exercise. Now, I just hear from my colleague that the number has gone to 39. At the same time, Mr. Speaker, sir, I would like to also share my sympathies with the Kenyans, innocent Kenyans who've, whose properties were either looted or vandalized. I also stand here, Mr. Speaker, sir, because often little problems that happen tend to overshadow the bigger picture of what our security forces have been able to do. Uh, while there are rogue security officers that have caused a lot of pain to Kenyans, but there are those that have really stood very firm to protect this country from going into anarchy and uh, by making sure they abided by keeping law and order without also violating the rights of uh, our protesters as enshrined in the Constitution. I say this because I watched a very emotional video, Mr. Speaker, sir, where an armed police officer with a gun, with everything, was chased down the street. He could have opted to use the gun to protect himself, but accepted to be clobbered by the mob for the sake of making sure that extrajudicial killing does not happen. And we have such uh, security officers that we must have, uh, uh, you know, applaud and also share our sympathies with them for doing an excellent job. Mr. Speaker, sir, allow me to also congratulate Generation Z for their unprecedented success in this country. And what they have achieved over a few days is uh, going to go down the you know, democratic space of this country as an indelible mark in the nation, Kenya for many years to come. Mr. Speaker, sir, uh, you, you know, for many people, maybe understanding the plight of Gen, Gen Z was a very difficult issue. I have a daughter who is in Form 2, Mr. Speaker, and I was away. I called. Uh, she was in midterm break, and I called to say bye-bye because she was going back to school. And the only question she asked me, Baba, can I ask you something? Are you supporting the finance bill? And she's in a boarding school. And I told her, no, Baba, I'm not supporting. And she said, had I been, had you, told, you know, had you answered you're supporting, Baba, I would never been able to raise my head up in school because everybody knows my father is a member of parliament. These are the unfortunate scenarios we have, whereas maybe the adults don't understand, our Gen Z have really understood what is bedeviling them. Mr. Speaker, sir, maybe it's, it's, it's worth to reflect on what is the true frustration of Gen Z. You look at the public service advertisement in Kenya. Only those that are able and have money will have access to opportunities in the public service whether it is at the national level or the, at, at the county level. Now you have stu children going to school and going through the uh, <coughs> most levels of higher education, but with zero hope of getting employed. Then they look at the budget of the nation, 
and they try and come through the budget to see if there is only hope contained in that budget that is going to really help them out, and they see nothing. 